placement for Mayor Vandersteen, who happens to be in Montreal right now. Um, so if you can please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. If we can um, just go around the room and introduce yourself. And some of you are here as neighborhood re representatives, so if you could please indicate that. And then if you're just a citizen interested in learning, that's good too. So we'll start over here. Scott? Scott Levandowski, Alderman, 5th District. Meredith Spruan, Deputy City Clerk, work in the City Clerk's Office. Cheryl Smith, I'm an election specialist in the Clerk's Office. Nancy Mary, I'm neighborhood development planner. Todd Wolf, um, Alderman District 1 and also uh, Council President. Mary Lindau, you Alderman District 4. Uh, Dean Decker, um, Indiana Corridor Neighborhood Association. Marcus Savaglio, District 5 Alderperson. Ryan Sorensen, District 8 Alderman. Margaret Orangebrock, I'm just here to listen. Jody Kramer, new member for the Memorial Association. Nancy Lawrence. Joe Clark, near North neighborhood. Alan Murphy, Ellis Historic District. Henry Capitolo, Gateway neighborhood. Yes, Scott Hanson, King Park neighborhood. Grazie Cadela from the King Park neighborhood as well. Okay. Ron Miller, WSCS, Volunteer Gentleman. <laughs> Resident of Raider neighborhood. <laughs> So uh, number 2.1, approval of the minutes of November 7th, 2017. Motion to approve is submitted. Seconded. We have a motion and a second. Any corrections, additions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Number 3.1 is a feature presentation on the city-wide redistricting by the city clerk staff. So, Meredith, it's all yours. Matter which one I use? No. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Oh, whoa. Well, okay, I'm not going to handle it that part. <clears throat> All right, so we just put together a little presentation. They asked us to talk about um, the definition of an older person and then go into what's happening next year with the districts. Um, because we are going from eight districts to ten next year, so that's what we're going to talk about tonight. <clears throat> so what is an older person for the city of Sheboygan? It's an elected official that is nonpartisan office. It represents a district in the city of Sheboygan and takes part in Common Council, which is re um, responsible for setting the government policies for the city. So what are those responsibilities that they have? Their main responsibility is, is to represent the constituents in their district. Um, they attend common council meetings, which happen the first and the third Mondays of the month. They happen at 6 p.m., usually third floor is City Hall, but our elevator is broken, so they're at the county building right now. And they are part of at least one standing committee. And part of this also, the standing committees, there are four right now. There's the Finance and Personnel Committee, Public Works, Public Safety, and Law and Licensing. And those committee meetings meet the opposite weeks of the council. So the first Monday will be council meeting, the next week, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday will be one of these meetings, and then the third week will be council again, and the fourth week will be these meetings again. So what kind of decisions do they make? These are just very, very few decisions that they make for the city. Um, annexations, they approve the budget, development decisions, employment, street repair, signage, all kinds of things. So that's just a very few, um, I should have brought a 
an agenda for their meetings. They're usually four or five pages long of all the decisions that they make for the city. <clears throat> and this is kind of just a breakdown of where everybody falls, kind of, who works for the city. So the citizens on top, they're represented by their common council, which are elected positions. The mayor, city attorney, city clerk, and the municipal court judge is also, those are all elected. And then this kind of breaks down the office of city administrator, and then all the department heads that go underneath there. So that's kind of how it breaks down and how everybody's connected. And those are the names of all the people. That's also on our city website if you're interested in looking at it in more detail. So how do those documents become agenda items on the council agenda? We just kept it real simple, but communications from residents is an important thing that, um, um, important way that documents become on the council for them to look at. So if somebody has an issue with, um, there was an, one just a week ago or so about um, parking signs, no parking signs, or more parking signs, or stop signs, or things like that. Um, those are things that would go to council. They would refer them to one of the standing committees. They would look at it and make a decision. So all the persons and department heads submit I items for the council agenda also. Um, resolutions, ordinances, contracts, agreements, and all those things come through our office because we compose the agenda. <laughs> okay, what's the process of documents? It's different really depending on what kind of document it is, but typically most matters are gonna go through two <laughs> council agendas. So Common Council is gonna look at them twice. The first meeting, the items usually are not discussed but they are referred to one of the standing committees. So the 16 aldermen, are they, older persons are there. They are referring it to a standing committee, and those standing committees, um, well, this I already said, but they meet opposite weeks, and they allow for discussion of a smaller group of older persons. So standing committees are made up of five older persons, and then they can discuss things um, in a smaller group. And then those committees make a recommendation to the council as a whole. So that's why they come back to the council a second time where those decisions can be made and a final vote can be taken. Yeah. On the standing committees, you know, yeah. point out that there's citizen members as well as yeah. city managers and elders, not just the elders. On the committees. Yes. So the, the four standing committees are the ones that are made up of. Um, the five older persons. There's also committees that city plan, other things that are made, other committees that they're made up of um, citizens, the city administrator, other people like this. This committee that meets, it's not made up of older persons, it's made up of people from the community. So that's a good point. Thank you. So can you speak at Common Council? Yes. You can speak, but you have to sign up in our office what's called public forum. Public forum is optional for five community members to speak before the meeting gets started. Well, at, right after the meeting gets started, I should say. It's a limit to five minutes. Five people can speak, but they can only speak on a topic that's on the agenda. So it's not really a random thing. If there's something that's important to them on their agenda, they can sign up with us. We'll call their name during the meeting and they get to speak for five minutes. They can also speak at standing committees or any of the committees really, but they have to contact the chairperson of that committee just to let them know that they're coming, what they're speaking on, things like that. Okay, how do they vote? This is a kind of important one, Sue and I talk about it because when you see it on TV, it looks like it, it's not real clear how, how they're voting. We use, they use Chromebooks. And we use a system called Board Docs. And so when it's time to vote, the clerk opens up voting, which they do a couple clicks on the Board Docs screen, and 
the alder person then votes on the screen and it comes up to the clerk, which then gets posted on a board like this so you can see who voted which way. Um, votes are taken individually, calculated, and then displayed on the screen for the public to view how each alder voted. That doesn't happen every single time. Sometimes it's just done verbally. So. All right. Let's get into a little bit more why we're here, and then we'll open it up to any questions that you guys might have. Right now, the city is divided into eight districts. Okay, there's 26 wards. Well, that's not completely true. Every annex, we were just talking about this. Every little annexation that happens between um, when they take the census every 10 years, any annexation that happens creates a new ward even if there's not somebody that lives there. So right now we have 30, 35 wards, but there's only, out of the 27 through 35, I think we have two wards that might have people, that have people in them. But we still have to create a ward for any and all annexations. But we we'll usually say 26 wards, because those are the main wards. And after the census, the people in those annexations will kind of go into those 26 wards. And we'll go back to that. Um, right now, two older persons represent each district. That is wrong. It shouldn't say ward, it should be district. So we have eight districts, 16 older persons. Okay? We have maps over there for anybody that wants to take them, and they're colored maps. These maps we got off the county site. And the reason why we can use the county's maps is because the new districts that we have are going to align with the county's districts. <coughs> so the county has 10 districts for us, and we are aligning our districts with them. So you can just click, you just click through Well, I can kind of say, maybe I'll say. On this handout, this is an article that Sue Richards wrote for the paper, and we have copies for everyone, but it goes through each of the 10 districts, and then which wards are in each of the districts, or which wards will be in each of the districts come April, okay? We also have a handout over there of what wards are in our eight districts right now. So it's, it's going to be a little bit confusing, I think, for people because I know one older person came in and picked up papers to run, and the side of the street she lives in is her district, and across the street is now not her district, which was before. So neighbors might be confused on who represents them right now. So let's just go through what's changing. Okay, we've been talking a lot about redistricting, and it's not really redistricting. It's more a realignment of what we currently have. Okay, so nothing's really changing except for what district people fall into. Okay, so there's going to be 10 districts matching the counties. The 20, and this is going to be really important, the wards stay the same. The polling places stay the same. And so that's really important for people to know because that's a big deal. And so if they were in Ward 1, they're still going to the quarry. They're still going to the book for Ward 1. It's the same. The only thing that's changed for some people is the older person that they knew might not live in their district anymore and might not represent them. So I think that's the most important thing is to people to kind of figure out what district they're in now because the words changed for the districts. And now we will only have one older person per district. So instead of 16, we're going to 10. How many April? Okay. okay, what does this mean? I might have talked this, but we'll go through. Words stay the same. Polling location and processes will all stay the same. So how you voted before is how you're going to vote 
now. Um, but you may be in a different district. Okay, and this is a change for all the persons too, because the, rep the wards that they represented before are not necessarily the wards that they're going to represent now. And it's a change for the number, 16 to 10, so. Okay, who is going to be on the ballot? All older persons' terms are going to expire in 2018. If you're used to voting for older persons, you'll know that it's a two-year term, and <coughs> there's two per district, so one is up every other year. Okay, this is going to be different because right now you're voting for 10 older persons across the city, okay? If you're in an odd district, 13579, they're only running for a one-year term, okay? Even districts are running for a two-year term. So the even districts are gonna run for a term of 18 through 20, and then the odd is only 18 through 19. And then in 19, the odd districts are gonna run for a two year term. So then at that point, it will start making sense that everybody's running for a two year term again. It's just gotta get that first year out of the way. Okay. So that was a lot of information that we went through kind of quick. Um, but we are here to answer questions or to point out on the map if you have questions about where you live or which wards. Do you want me to go through which wards, where they were and where they are now? What are you thinking? What would be helpful? What's helpful information? Okay, let me grab that other sheet. You don't have one up here, do you? All right. At the clerk's office, we have a list all the time that will give you the breakdown of the districts, the wards, who the older persons are, their email address, their address, their telephone number, and when their term expires. So we have this that we can pass out, and when anybody comes and registers to vote, we give them one of these in our office. And this just kind of helps them know who's going to be on the ballot, who represents them in the city, things like that. Okay. Good question. Yeah. So this is the present of what we have right now. This is current. Okay. And this is what it's going to be. And that's what it's going to be. Okay. And you can see then when you compare the two, you'll really be able to compare. Um, Especially who's an older person sure. now, yeah, I looked on it. and where they're where they live, and how it changed their district for them. What is the reasoning behind the odd ones running for one year and the even running for two years? So we can get them on opposite years running for two-year terms. Oh. So if they both ran for two years, they'd always be up for re-election at the same time. So it's kind of to get that balance back to it so yeah it's going to be confusing for the next couple of years just you know making sure everybody is where they need to be but does anybody else want a copy of the, the current just to kind of look at them while we is, talk about is there a map of the current eight districts we didn't bring a map sorry but we would have one in our office and we do have maps on our website that you can look at. Would the, the maps on the website, would it be the new ones with the 10 versus the old one with the 8? Or is we, it the old one? we have a new complete map like this one, a full map of the city of the new okay. districts on our website. If you, um, and we have maps of the current district. The little maps that we're handing out here actually have come from the county site oh. because they have them color coded right now for um, so their districts, which wanted, are our districts. If now. we wanted to get a large one like that, could we get one from the first? We office? have, yeah, we have bigger ones, yes, okay. but not that big. 
But we have yeah, large the engineering, engineering department does yeah, large do that for us. Mm -hmm. A little bit larger. Absolutely. Okay. I believe you can purchase one if you want to. Okay. A bigger one like that if you wanted a bigger one. Oh, we can buy one like that. From the engineering department, yeah. Okay. Or let us know and we can figure that out for you okay. and come through our office. That would be fine, too. Yeah, because it'd be easier seeing all the streets. <laughs> it's <laughs> on, the, on the big one. Yes. <laughs> And that's where we found the little maps to be very helpful for if you live in a certain district that the county had because it was blown up into, you know, that's much easier to see than even the 11 by 14 that we have in our office. <coughs> so is, is the reduction in alderperson, is this, is this a cost saving measure or? That would be an alderperson question, I think. Or is it? I, reason I guess I can tell you my, my personal opinion on why I voted for it, okay. which was mainly the fact that um, there were a lot of complaints, and I'm just giving you my personal opinion, sure. there were complaints uh, that you know some alders weren't following through, answering calls, things like that. Um, when you have two alders for a, a district, um, you're kind of working, you know, some people are only calling one versus the other. Um, also, my personal opinion was not, not everybody was connected like they should be. So I'd rather have 10 people that want to be alders that are very involved than have 16 that are partial. Sure. That maybe not take it seriously. Yeah, I could understand that. Uh, and, and, uh, I was one of the folks that was behind, behind the idea. Um, for a city our size, 16 alders is pretty big. Most cities our size, um, there are fewer alders. Not not universally, though. You know, there, there's some that you know are as large as we are. The county board, which now has 25 supervisors, used to have 34. You know, it's the second largest county board in the state. So we like things big here in Sheboygan. So, so the the two alder per district thing is interesting. At, at the time that we very first started talking about this two or three years ago, Bill Waterman was still on the council. He was an alder. And remember, Bill is sort of our informal city historian. And he got up and he said, here's why there are two alders per district. Because when this started, the alders went out every night and lit the gas lights. So you wanted to have two to share the work of lighting the gas lights. and. If there was a crime committed against you, you didn't go to the police, you went to the alder, and then the alder went to the police. So that's why there was, they, you know, kind of felt the need to be two people to share the work. So here's what happens. <clears throat> so I've been, I'm in my, it's been a while, six or seven years. Um, and the first partner that I had in District 4, which is wards 13, 14, and 15, um, basically was just never, ever around. He went for six months without attending a city council meeting. He ended up in jail. Um, constituents would try to contact him and they would have no luck. The alder that succeeded him was more responsive. But he and I took a very, very different approach to problem solving. So the question is, when you go on the city website and you see two alders, well, who do I call? Who do I email? Some people will call or email both. Some will choose one or another. Um, it was the case that often the second alder that was in my district, we kind of worked across purposes. Um, just because, for whatever reason, we just didn't communicate that well. Um, the, the alder that I share now is fabulous. I love this guy, but he and I, we're, we're pretty much on the same page as we approach problem solving, because that's what we do as alders for our constituents is we try to solve problems. You know, you, people call, we got problems, you try and solve those problems. Well, sometimes Andy will, Andy will get the information and he'll be working on a solution and then the constituent will say, well, maybe I ought to let her know as well. And so I start on my merry path, and then I find out that Andy's been working on it, and it gets pretty confusing. So it's never, I can see when you needed to light the gas lamps, and you needed to be the person to whom crimes were reported, you'd want to. 
But this really, to, to, to 12 of us, 12 out of 16 of us voted in favor of this in December of 2015, it re this really makes a whole lot more sense. Um, it's really neat that we're going to be in the same, so this, it, each of you will have the same county board supervisor and alder. You won't be in one county board district, supervisory district, and in another aldermanic district. It, it's going to be together. We think that that makes sense. Um, it helps people navigate who their elected officials are and what they want from them. So we think that that makes sense. Um, there'll be small cost savings. You know, I get $158 every two weeks, you know, and then there, there are 16 of us. So, you know, if there are 10 of us, there'll be some minor cost savings, but that's really not the reason that we're doing it. We just think that 10 people come together as a group, as a more cohesive group, they're able to discuss things in a more, I keep saying cohesive, but in a, in, not even friendly, but the discussion is just at a higher level because there aren't quite as many people around. And then, I mean, this is in addition to all the stuff that Todd said, which is exactly right. You know, sometimes, you know, when there's so many people, you might have a bad alder who just can kind of hide. You know, like one of my partners just hid for months. You know, and. You know, we got frustrated about it, but nobody really knows. So we think that this will be more transparent and more powerful, hopefully more efficient. Uh, but it is, I mean, you know, Meredith has pointed this out very well. This is a, this is a big change. You know, there's, there's no doubt about it, but we think it's going to be a good change. So do you think the workload per older person is going to increase, or do you think it will? It will. Normally well, we've, because we've, of the increase of... But we've adjusted priority? the committees and kind of blended things a little bit, so it's to try to help balance it. And again, if you get the right group working on things, it's not, I mean, that's what we're here for. So that also, it's really, it's really is more efficient, I would yeah. argue, because we're going to restructure the committees, and we are, a lot of times, alders were doing things that staff could have done sure. much more quickly and much more efficiently. Yeah. People could always complain to the alders or could bring things to a committee. So we're actually going to streamline to three standing committees. We're going to, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> each alder is going to be on one standing committee. Um, but we, we think that we're really streamlining stuff okay. and, and, and just looking at making things more efficient. The other, the other thing that I'd say to that is there was a lot, of, a lot of thought put into the restructuring of the committees to see which committees aldermen need to be responsive at and which committees could really be citizen-driven committees. So there was a lot of committees that went to not having an alderman on them, where in the past when there was 16 aldermen, there was an aldermanic representative on just about every committee there was, and at one time there was 57 committees. So that number has now shrunk down to, I think, right around maybe 37, 38 committees, and probably a good 15 or 20 of them have all the men's have been taken off of the committee, so it's really staff and citizen driven. You know, they're important stuff they're talking about, but it, it's not at the level of ha maybe having that input at the aldermatic side. But I think if, you know, and if there's a need that has to come out of that, it always can go to the council and be referred to a standing committee, um, you know, as a kind of a backup. But that whole kind of restructuring and vision of, of not having aldermanic representation on every committee is going to help in the workload of the new 10 elected people. And can I say just one more thing and then I will absolutely shut up. Um, to me, one of the main reasons to do this is that if you are in a district with two alders and they vote differently, essentially you have not been represented yeah. because it's, it's a draw. <laughs> and I mean, husbands and wives do that all the time, but you know, within the marriage you can handle it. But you know, on the council, you know, I, I, yeah, I don't get a vote. <laughs> that's the way it's supposed to be taught. Um, so I think um, that, to me, I forgot to mention that. That's just a big reason is that we would cancel our votes out. Mm -hmm. And that was just so the people of the, of the 4th District really didn't have a say because I voted one way and Joe Jose voted another way. I, I have a question that's probably just a civics question. And I guess I'm confused looking at the county supervisory versus this. In the case of the cities we have, in the city we have a district and wards. In the counties, what do we have? Is it like townships and districts? 
or, or how it's did just the districts? I, I'm pretty sure it's just the districts. Okay, with so that being the we're case, we're matching them now. Okay, so we have eight districts just in the city. How many total districts are there in the county? Twenty-five. 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 So, so, and there are how many all? How many county? All the they did one per supervisor. Yes, there are two, right? Twenty-five. 25 supervisors. So there are twenty-five supervisors. Right. One for each. Okay. <coughs> so this this doesn't say who our district supervisor no. is in any place. No, but it will. I, the county sites. This is where we got the maps from, and the map. If you go to your district on the county site, it tells you, shows you a picture, and and gives you some information, and then you can click the maps that we printed off today too okay so, so the city the city is covered by eight individual districts and then the remaining 17 are 10. No, 10. Yeah, we're, 10. it will be 10. 10. 10. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. right now we're eight and that's i think we're right. eight until okay. april right yes could you clarify again about the elections so <coughs> the, like, odd, the district numbered with odd numbers will be running again in, in april 2019 the odd oh, districts the are running again, right. and I think that um, so our eight districts this coming year. Ten districts. I, I know, but right up until April, they're still represented by, eight. by their eight districts, right. and their two older persons. Even though people are going to be voting for their new districts and one older person, right. and that's the confusing thing. So. Changing our maps and everything on our website isn't current information until April after the election when new people get sworn in, and that doesn't happen until the middle of April. So I think that that's really, it's good to be educated on this and what's happening because it's very, it's different for people. Yeah, so this, this is very good because we can, at least as represent, representative of the neighborhood, bring this information to our neighborhood association, Absolutely. which is very, very useful. But I still don't understand those. So the odd numbers are yes. going to be rerunning in 2019. Right. And the odd numbers, mm -hmm. and the, the even numbers, will yes. also rerun. Not until 2020. 2020. But in 2020, 2020 everybody's going to be rerunning. No, no, no. no. So odd districts will be in odd election years, and then even districts will be in even number yeah. years. Okay, but then there will be a moment when all districts will be running at the same time for the same amount of time, or not? The only time that all districts are running on the ballot is in 2018. In 2019, which is an odd year, the odd districts will run for two years. 2020 is an even year. The even districts will run for two years. 21, the odd for two years. 22, the even. Do you know what I'm saying? So the only time that everybody's up for election is just to get this process started is in 2018. Thank And then in 18, the even ones will be for a two-year period to get on the even cycle, and the odd ones will be on a one-year one year term to get on the odd cycle. Does that make sense? It does. So when this was brought up by, I think, the Memorial Neighborhood raised the question about having this presentation, and originally we were going to wait till after the holidays, and then it was decided to do it now because if anybody in the neighborhoods have an interest in running for election you have until december 31st or whatever the date is you papers know. have to okay First thank you <laughs> okay yes if anybody has interest in running and to fill those 10 seats um the papers have to be taken out and returned to us by january 2nd um it takes a little bit, especially if you're new, to fill out those papers because you have to get signatures from your constituents. So, and those ha those signatures and those addresses need to be verified in our office. So, we tell people to hopefully get them in earlier than January second, so we can verify them. And if there's anything missing or anything incorrect, they can go back out and get another signature. 
and bring it back so that their papers are good to go. But it's so 5 o'clock, January 2nd is the deadline. How many signatures do you have to have? You need 20, but not more than 40. So a lot of people will get 30, so that if a couple of them aren't right, or somebody wrote down the wrong address or something, that person doesn't count, but there's enough there to make the 20. So yeah, that's, that's what we're working on right now. And it's good to have this meeting now too, because there are older persons that are going out and getting signatures. And so we're sending them with the maps, with the old districts, with the new districts, in case people have questions also. Because somebody might say, well, you're in this district, you know, this ward, you don't represent me. And it, it could be confusing. So we want to send them with as much knowledge and stuff that they can use. I think another reason it's good to have the meeting now, sooner rather than later, some neighborhoods have talked about inviting their current representatives and anyone else who might pull papers in their district and having a forum, a discussion with the neighborhood about, you know, those alder aldermen's vision and thoughts and, and all of that. And I think that's a really interesting approach. And I would encourage all, all the neighborhoods sitting here to consider organizing something like that with your own representatives. Um, you know, we're getting, the number of aldermen are being reduced, so there's gonna be some competitive districts, so it's good to hear from your representative. So there's even more time before the election to organize that sort of thing. How many people have actually taken on papers? I wish I would have brought that, but there are. Anyone in District 8? <laughs> <laughs> Call me tomorrow. No, no. Um, I, can, I, I know we're going to have a primary in at least probably, as long as people, they've taken out papers, but they're not official official until those signatures come back. Okay. So I know we're going to have a primary probably in at least two of the districts, which means there's three or more people that have taken out papers for those districts. So you don't know which districts those are. District two and district ten. Oh, okay. Well, that's for sure. Know. What are what district are you? You're and three. And three. And three? So two, three, and ten right now, sorry. You have at least three people that have signed up to run for that seat. We haven't gotten those paper or the signatures back from everybody yet, so that is I mean that's so if we right. call your office we can get the names of Absolutely. We have them all written down, and okay. I should have brought them. I'm sorry, but yes, there are. So when there's a primary, that happens in February. So that's going to be February 20th. So if there's not more than two, then there, there won't be a primary for that district. Okay. For all their persons. There might be a primary for a state office or a county office, but not for that. And then in April, everybody will be on the ballot. So when you say that they would be most likely primary for at least three of the districts, it means that there are new candidates for those districts in, ad in addition to the previous other persons? Well, District 2, currently this new district, I don't know if you saw this paper, but it has three current older persons. Yeah. And so the thought is, and the signatures aren't back, but that one has three. Um, district 3, there is a new person. So there's the two current ones that would represent that and the new person. Um, and District 10, right now we have one current older person. There's three on here, but two new people yeah. in addition to one current. But it is also possible that current older persons are not going to recandidate themselves. Correct. We've had some non-candidacy, it's called non-candidacy papers where they come in and say, absolutely, I'm not running. And that is public information, so if I can't we contact you to have that information. Absolutely. To absolutely. Yep. Any other questions? Um, I think there is. So this sheet is really helpful too because it tells you where to go to register to vote and everything else. Um, it gives you all the dates for the election for the coming year, the ones in the fall also. Um, it has our number on it. So if you have any questions about any of that, you can certainly call us. We will find the answer if we don't know it. Anything else? Okay.
<laughs> so, if there's no other questions, um, those of you that are on the Mayor's Neighborhood Leadership mm -hmm. Cabinet, I think it says future meeting date to be determined, but I thought at the last meeting yeah, we decided one. one. It was it so January 16th? It is? Okay. Yeah, that's what you have down. So it's January 16th, it's yet to be determined where it's going to be. Um, but we'll get that out to you yep. as soon as we find out. We talked about an idea earlier. Three sheep. Yeah. <laughs> Did you say fishing? No, three sheep. Three sheep. Three sheep. Three sheep. Three sheep. Three sheep. Is there any other Hold questions? Right. Yes. I, I have another question. It's like when, when, I, when I look at these, the older person, could you, uh, if we were calling, could we find out what ward? Do these older persons live in? Because the wards and the districts overlap now. Is that correct? From one to another? So that someone who may be in one ward at this point is going to be in a different district in the future. So, um, it happens, yeah. I was District 1. I am District 1. Okay. But I will be, if I get elected, <coughs> when I get elected, I will be District 2. And what ward are you in? In which ward? Right. Um, I want to say I am in Ward 2. Okay. But District so 1 originally okay. went over. And in my example... Okay, Todd. I'm kidding. In my example, um, so I'm currently District 4, and I cover wards 13, 14, and 15. Mm -hmm. I'll be in District 3, which covers boards 11 and 13. So I'll, I will only have two wards. They'll be bigger, um, but it'll be, 11 will be a new ward for me. It'll be a place where I haven't knocked on doors and things like that. And your associate in that ward is Andy Ross. Right. Which district will he be in now? Well, if, if, Andy, if Andy decides to run, we would be running against each other. Because he, he also lives in Ward 13 and District 4, so he would be running in District 3, representing Wards 11 and 13. Because you confirmed, though, that um, to, be, to qualify for candidacy, you have to be resident in the district you... Correct. Okay. Correct. Right. So if I were in District, if I lived in District 15, I would be running. I would be running in a different, in a different new aldermanic district. So for me, my example is even a little more confusing. So I represent. I represent District Eight. I'm Ryan. Okay. I represent okay. District Eight. Um, in the new district, I'll represent District Eight. Um, okay. So rep right now, I represent wards 24, 25, and 26, and I'll represent wards 24 and 22. Next time, but I won't be running again. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 24. But I don't. But the other alderman in my district, I won't be running against any incumbent because my counterpart lives in Ward 26. So we're further enough apart so that there isn't any, you know, competitiveness. I guess. And there, and there are yes. some districts that. Are, are older person less at this point? In other no. words, I think District, district 9. District nine. No. There's no, <coughs> there's no alder. There's nobody that turned in papers for District 9. You so have. We have one person okay. that turned in for District 9, but that's not a current alder person. Right. It's somebody new. So if people are interested in running. Yeah. Even against me. <laughs> 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 um, it, uh, you know, there are certainly opportunities now. It'll be fun. <laughs> Any other questions? If not, go ahead. I was just going to say it was a very educational presentation. I mean, a lot of information was covered, and it was covered very well. Yes. I was. I didn't know what to expect, but. I did get all of the information, and you did a fantastic job telling us all the changes. So you I tell mean, Sue Richards that you did a good job. Okay. <laughs> oh, right, right. So you are the new Sue Richards then? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Not a couple weeks yet. But you will yes. be, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
January 8th. The new city through Richard. The new city through Richard. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, so I, I guess we're going to do it is it, as best of you guys understand this, if you could take this back to your neighborhood association boards yeah. and at least communicate that and if you run into people in the public if they've got questions or concerns you know and can't answer them send them to the city clerk's office first floor city hall um, give them a call whatever uh, and we'll try to answer it but I think you know this is very educational for us to take back to each of our respective neighborhood associations so with that, I would look for a motion to adjourn. For a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. We are adjourned.